at the moment, my ass is so wet. I feel like I've hurt myself, I've pissed myself. That's a good reason I need to fit some more guards. So here's a video of how to fit some SKS blue males, which I used to have on this bike, but they broke. So I put a new set on another bike. Here's a video. So after nearly 5,000 miles of use, the mud guards on my road bike finally snapped. What I had on there was some, um, hang on, what they're called? They are some SKS blue males that I had on the road bike. Some of these. And, you know, 5,000 miles is a good run. The only reason they actually broke in the end was because I didn't kind of maintain them properly. The plastic bracket that hangs the rear mud guard. Uh, was flapping it broke on one side and I didn't fix it I just left it flapping around and then eventually the rear mudguard snapped in two um, so I've left them off the road bike and I've bought a new set to put on old Frankenstein here um, I'm thinking this will be like my winter run around and um, so having some mudguards on it would be good uh, you can see there's like dirt splattered all up it already from where I've been riding around. So it's nice to have the mud guards. Um, when you buy them, obviously you've got to check they're for your wheel size, and there'll be different widths as well that go with your tyre size. So I've got 32 mil, I believe, on here. Continental City Ride. Uh, I should say 700 by 32 somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're 32 mil, but there we go. So I needed some slightly wider ones that I'd normally have on my road bike. Um, but yeah, I'm going to fit them. I'm going to have to get the. Uh, I'm going to do the rear first. So let's get the wheel off. Oh. So these mudguards cost about 20 pounds. Um, the plastic construction with steel um, doohickeys, stays, and you know they're pretty easy to fit. It's just the rear mudguard, somehow it's got crushed there, so I need to split it. Okay, that's my rear guard, front guard's already falling out. Drop it on the floor. Got all your bolts and stuff there. And your stays. Oops. Uh, the front stays. I don't even know if I can focus. The front stays, which are the black ones, are um, sort of like a quick release, I guess. Uh, they're, if they get, if they get um, trapped in anyhow, they don't jump up your front wheel, so they just break apart easily, whereas the rear ones are solid. Um, so first, I'm going to tip all these bolts out. Aha, this is what I'm looking for. you got your bridge stay here, so I'm going to put that on. So first thing you're going to want to do is put your bridge stay on, so it can just be hung, hung up. Um, feed your guard through the caliper first, easiest way to get it on, and then put your slide your bridge stay onto the guards. There we go, and you'll get a rough idea where that needs to be positioned. Um, there's a hole drilled in the back here, and that is for the bottom stay, which will have, where is it, here we go, there's a little bag with a couple of clips in, which will go on the back of there, or you can just use a big bolt if this doesn't fit. So down here in the darkened abyss, we've got 
the four things that they give you to connect to the back here. And um, that's going to go over the back and sit on that little bridge between the chain stays. That's going to go on the back of the guard. And I think the best way to do it is going to be to feed the screw through that side and then bolt it on the other side so you can, otherwise it's going to be a bit difficult to get a screwdriver in there. And of course that is not long enough at all. Of course you can just bolt this section straight through that hole on the chain stay. In fact I'm going to do that because look how easy that came off then. So I'm going to find myself a big bolt and do that. 4 mil. And that will hold that on securely there. Fitting the brake, uh, fitting the bridge. I think it was a 10 mil for my brake. It was. So you just got to literally undo the bolt on the back and feed your bridge into it. Okay. Now once that's on, uh, I'm going to do it up and then put the wheel back in so I can check the clearances. Because you don't want to hang in too low. Okay, now that's in and on, back in. Uh, I'm just going to be looking at checking the clearances that I've got round. Um, mine is super tight, especially underneath this bridge here. Just check you've got the clearance round and you can fit the tyre in it. Mine is super tight. What I could do if, uh, if I need to raise the height anymore, because that is going through the... Actually, I've got a bit of height. Um, if that was touching, oh the bracket is, this bracket here is touching the bridge so I could just take that out, flip it round so it was supporting at the back here and then I could lift the uh, guard up a bit more um, so if you've got that trouble, there you go um, but yeah, that's going to go on now, I just need to put the stays on which are going to go from here to here times two and the rear will be on Okay, so now we're getting to the somewhat tricky part. Um, before you go attaching the stays to the frame, they need to touch the guards first so you can kind of set the height. You've got the bridge on the um, mud guard here. You've got a washer which will go over the top and a cap. That's after you set the right size, but first you need to put these on which will hold the mud guard in place. I mean, you don't have to put this cap on purely optional and um, so what I think is the best way is to put this on first just through so then you can feed it through through there get the nut and put the nut on So with that on loosely, you can slide it up and down. If you attach it to the, attach the other end of the forks, woohoo, forks, other end of the stays down there, 
to your chain stays, drop out seat stays. Um, then you can get an idea of where to set the height to. So do the other side as well, before doing the cutting or anything, the next step, um, so do the other side and then we'll go on to trimming. Okay, so with both sides done, um, these are just loose now, so you can adjust these to your heart's content. Um, you want to try and position it so that you've got a good bit of clearance over the tyre but it's not too tight so I think about there for me yep I'm going to go there and then just pinch them up you can make more adjustments after by just bending the rods basically this is just your initial and do that to your other setter as well up top And then again, just spin the wheel, just check it's not rubbing anywhere. If it is, I mean you can literally just reposition the uh, guard just by grabbing this and just bending it to one side or the other. Um, and it will reposition the mud guard. But mine's pretty central there, which is good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So just double check all the nuts. Okay. Um, right. Now it's time to put the caps on. If like this one down here, it's. Oh, they're all going to need to be trimmed. Um, yeah, unfortunately, they're going to have to be trimmed. So, this cap's meant to go on and then fit over the nut, apparently. But that's on all the way and it's going to be too long. So, we're going to have to trim them down slightly. Best way is with an angle grinder. Um, they're a bit tough to cut by uh, what do you call them? Tin snips. Yeesh. So you're not going to be able to cut them with tin snips at all. Or are you? No. Um, you can hack for them. Um, it might take a while, but you just need to trim it down so you can fit this on. You can hacksaw them, uh, you probably have to take them back out and then do it in a vice or something so you can hold it steady because when you're going to hacksaw you're going to be moving around a lot. Uh, so I'm not going to leave these off for now and then when I take this bike into work I'm going to angle grind them off quickly. There we go. Hacksaw is not the easiest method, and you end up scratching your mud guard a little bit, but then that cap just fits on over the top and goes over there. Job done. So you need to do that for all four of the rear mud guards, and then we can go on to the front. Okay. 
I actually just cut down all the bits on the rear mud guard so they're all done now, tidy. Didn't use a um, angle grinder. So time to do the front mud guard. So again, wheel off first. Okay, and like the rear mud guard, the front mud guard also has a bridge, but it's built in. Um, so again, it's just a case of unbolting the back of this and bolting this one on. Now I'm going to try and push this up as much as I can to get myself as much clearance. So I'm going to have to do this last bit by open-ended. Okay. And again, before you do it up completely tight, put the wheel back in and check your clearances. Close the brake up and where's my spanner? There we go. Just check your wheel's got enough clearance. You can rotate the mud guard a little bit. Make sure it sits level. Yeah, it looks good. Then just do it up. Nice and tight. And also, like the rear mud guard, we're going to be. Let's zoom in a bit. We're going to be installing these stays. Yeah. Put the pointy end on first and then worry about this end. Um, this end is just a. What do they call it on this? They call it a ASR, an automatic stay release. So I guess that's in case it gets jammed. So, let's put them on. Pinched on. Okay, and once that's all bolted up, we've got to do the same thing again. And position the mud guard uh, in these dropouts. In the dropouts, position them so that you've got like, enough clearance there. So let me just uh, squeeze past you a second. I'll go around the back, I'll go around the back. So the main one we've got to watch out for is this but, uh, bottom one here. There we go. So I'm going to tuck that up there. And tuck that there. I've got about a finger's gap down the bottom here, so that will be good for me. Good to me. Uh, so again, trimming those off, putting the caps on, this is going to be annoying work now. There we have it, um, mud guards all on. Um, so the last couple of, uh, what do you call them, guides, uh, stays, chain stays, I actually cut off with an angle grinder because they're a bit more difficult on the front here to get to them with a hacksaw. Managed to do the rest with the hacksaw, um, but there we go, they're all on. Um, so no more soggy bottom for me when it rains. I just got to make sure I take this bike out rather than the other one. Um, I actually put some panniers on the back as well while I was at it to give me some extra carrying capacity. So this really is now a Frankenstein bike. But yep, there we go, chain stays all attached. Bolted down, <laughs> chain stays. What I'm mind about mud guard stays, um, all bolted at the top there, and yeah, it's nice and simple. I really do recommend these mud guards, the SKS Blue Mails. 
they give full coverage of protection, they're lightweight, they're cheap, they last they last a while. Um, and they don't matter around too much, so I think they're good quality mud guards for the price. Great mud guards to use if you're commuting. Um, so yeah, they're my recommendation. That's how I fit them. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, give it a uh, thumbs up. Give my reflectors a thumbs up as well. Um, if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Always bringing out more content. And yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one.